Hello everyone, how are you doing today? So, this is Dr. Ayan from the Veterinary Anatomy channel and today we will talk about the anatomy of the abdominal muscles in the dog. So, let's get started. So now we will talk about the abdominal muscles and let's start with the external abdominal oblique muscle. The external abdominal uh, oblique muscle which we can see here uh, originate from the ribs as you can see here, there, this is all the origin of the external abdominal oblique muscle and from the thoracolumbar fascia, so from the ribs and from the thoracolumbar fascia and inserts of course mainly on the linea alba as you can see here and on the iliopubic eminence. So if we cut you know uh, the external abdominal oblique muscle in this area very carefully it's a very thin muscle and reflected up and down as you can see here so we can see under it the internal abdominal oblique muscle. So let's just reflect it this way and that way here down. And here now we can see the internal abdominal oblique muscle. So here the internal abdominal oblique muscle originates from the thoracolumbar fascia, from the coxal tuberosity, and from the inguinal ligament inserts, as you can see here, to the linea alba, this is the linea alba here, so to the linea alba and the same time to the costal arch or the last ribs here. If we compare between the internal abdominal oblique muscle uh, and the external abdominal oblique muscle, you will find that the muscle fibers of the internal abdominal oblique muscle are oriented cranioventrally, as you can see here. Why? The muscle fibers of the external abdominal oblique muscle are oriented caudo, caudo ventrally. So this is the external and this is the internal muscle fibers. Now we will try to cut the internal abdominal oblique muscle also in the middle somehow to be able to see the transverse abdominis. So, as we said before, if we cut the internal abdominal oblique muscle in this way here and separate it very, very carefully, of course, because it's a very thin muscle, adhere somehow to the next muscle under it, which is the transverse abdominus muscle. So let's separate it and, uh, you know, dissect it up and down. In this case, we can see the third uh, layer of the abdominal muscle, which is the transverse abdominus. The transverse abdominis originates from the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebra and from the uh, costal arch or from the last ribs here and inserts to the linea alba. If you look at the muscle fibers of this muscle, they are transverse, like vertical, as you can see. And at the same time here, very specific for the transverse abdominis, where we can find these white lines on the muscle. These white lines are actually the ventral branches of the uh, lumbar, uh, of the lumbar um, spinal nerves. And in this region here are actually the intercostal nerves. So these white lines are nerves, nerves for the innervation, of course, of the transversus abdominis and other muscles in this region. Again, the transversus abdominis originate from the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebra and from the costal arch inserts to the linea alba. So now let's look at this very long muscle. It's the straight muscle of the abdomen or the rectus abdominis. The rectus abdominis muscle originate from the ventral surface of the sternum. So here we can see the abonerosis of this muscle. 
so from the ventral surface of the sternum and from the costal cartilage and inserts finally on the pectin of pubis via the prepubic tendon and at the same time you know it's also inserts to the linea alba medially so here it's very important to mention that the rectus abdominis or the straight muscle of the abdomen while it's moving caudally it goes also deeply that means in the cranial part of this muscle we will find that this muscle is covered from outside with just the abonerosis of the external abdominal oblique muscle while the abonerosis of uh, the internal abdominal oblique muscle and the transversus abdominis in this region here are internally to the rectus abdominis while in the umbilical region here you will find how the rectus abdominis moves one level deeper and in this region we will find that the external lamina of the rectus sheath is includes actually the abonerosis of the external abdominal oblique muscle and the abonerosis of the internal abdominal oblique muscle and after that we have the rectus abdominis on the internal surface in this region we have the abonerosis of the transversus abdominis so in the umbilical region, the external lamina of the rectus sheath includes the abonerosis of the external abdominal oblique muscle, the abonerosis of the internal abdominal oblique muscle, while the internal uh, lamina of the uh, rectus sheath in this case includes the lamin, the abonerosis of the transversus abdominis, and of course from inside we have uh, uh, the internal fascia, which is the transversal fascia here in the abdomen. In the caudal region of the abdomen, in this case, we can find how the rectus abdominis moves one layer deeper, and here we can see how the even the abonerosis of the transverse abdominal muscle, transversus abdominis here, moves uh, to the outside layer. So that means the external lamina of the rectus sheath in the cauda region here includes all abonerosis of all abdominal muscles, including the external abdominal oblique muscle, the internal abdominal oblique muscle, the abonerosis of the transversus abdominis, and after that we have the muscle, the rectus abdominis, which is covered internally here just by the internal fascia or the what's called of course the transversal fascia here in the abdomen so this is here the rectus abdominis or the straight muscle of the abdomen again originate from the sternum ventral surface of the sternum from the costal cartilages here and inserts to the prepubic tendon to the pectin of pubis the rectus abdominis or straight muscle of the abdomen.